G'day golfers, today we're pitching from Tight Lies. Now to be honest, I've put this off for a little while because I've just struggled to find some Tight Lies out here at Monash. It's growing season and we've had some good rains and as you can see, it's just brilliant out here at the moment. The fairways are like carpets, it's very lush. So pitching from the fairway here is actually quite easy. Now when you are talking about chipping and pitching from Tight Lies, then you do have to bring up angle of approach. And learning how to change your angle of approach can be quite challenging, but we've got some practice drills for you in the link in the description below or visit aussiegolfpros.com and you can find out how to find some drills to help you to adjust your angle of approach into the ball. Now we're going to look at this from two angles. We're going pitching from tight soft lies and pitching from tight firm lies. Both very different, we have to approach them differently, so that's going to be a challenge. Let's see what we can find out here at Monash. I'm Glenn Haynes, welcome to Aussie Golf Pros. Let's start with the soft, tight lie. So we've all had this shot where we've missed the green by quite a way and we've landed on the next tee. And we're walking up thinking, oh, well, that's lucky. I'm gonna have a good lie. And then you get up there and it's tight because we've got the mower blades down. The green keepers really like to keep the tees short. So it's, you know, a lot of people get over this shot and they think, well, I'm gonna struggle to get the club underneath the golf ball there and feel like they need to do something extra, like get underneath the golf ball and scoop it up in the air or what a lot of golfers do is push that shaft way forward in an effort to get the ball up the club face, but they end up digging into the ground too much and miss hitting it that way. And that's the big mistake that a lot of club golfers make. They try to do things very differently and you just don't need to. So what we actually need is trust in the golf club to do the work for us, and we just need some commitment. They're the two main things that are really gonna help any golfer pitch from a tight lie, because Realistically, it's, it's very mental. You're only gonna get into trouble when you think you're in trouble. We've gotta to learn to relax and just trust the club to do what it is designed to do. So yes, it's tighter, and maybe we've got a little bit less margin of error, but we just focus on the process and it'll happen. So I've got sand wedge here. Now, sand wedge has a little bit more bounce than lob wedge, but you can still hit lob wedge off of here. And we just gotta get better at hitting the grass in the right spot. So if I just put a line in the grass there, and this is just a learned skill, just focus on clipping that grass in the right spot. And if you can do that, then you're gonna get the result that you're looking for. It's only when we try to do something extra, you're gonna to start to hit the grass too early or too late or not at all. Now, yes, that's it's a more challenging shot. If I was here, then I'd have this cushion of air underneath the golf ball. And really that's, that's easy, we just, Keep it nice and shallow through, and you know, anyone can play that shot, and it is more forgiving, I'm not denying that. But we just focus on that process of hitting the grass in the right spot and committing to it, then we can play that shot from that tight lie. So soft hands and arms, we've got to really turn through this, commit to it. And it's come out a little lower because it's come a little lower off the club face because of that tight lie, but I haven't really changed technique. I've kept it shallow through. Remember, this is the soft tight lie. So I want you to look after the green keepers here. You don't need to take a divot when it's soft. Don't try to hit down on it excessively or try to get underneath it. We just want to brush that grass underneath the golf ball and let the club do the work for us. So setup wise, I have the ball position slightly forward in my stance. Middle's fine. Wherever you feel like you can brush that grass in a consistent spot. I wouldn't move it back though, because that means the shaft is gonna get more forward and that's gonna reduce your bounce. So you bounce the bottom of the sand wedge. Uh, I have 10 degrees of bounce in this golf club. So if that means if I move the shaft more than 10 degrees forward, that reduces that bounce to negative. And that's really dangerous because that leading edge can dig into the grass. We can take that divot and it's very easy to chunk that shot. And that's why we don't wanna get that shaft so far forward on these soft flies. We want to use the bounce, use the bottom of the sandwich to glide through the grass so we don't take that divot and we have some margin of error from that position. So I really want to be soft with the arms, turning that trunk through, trusting the club to do its job. Just brushing that grass. That's a hint to the right hand side there. But you can see that I'm just brushing the grass. It's coming a little lower because it's coming off a groove low on the club face. I'm not trying to get underneath it, it's doing its job. It's pitching onto the green, it's still spinning, and no dramas. 
Okay, let's have a bit of fun with this one. As I said, it's been raining, so we don't have any firm lies out here at Monash. So let's have a crack with the rubber. I'm gonna choose lob wedge this time because I want as much loft as I can get. It's very difficult to get a lot of spin on these shots. And the ball's really gonna fly off of the hard surface, so I don't need to hit it as hard. But I do need to play this differently to the soft lie. Remember with the soft lie, we were using the bounce through the grass. If we get this club to bounce off of this rubber, then we're just going to hit it in the middle of the ball and it's just gonna career over the back of the green. We obviously don't want that. So I'm gonna play this differently. I'm still gonna have the ball forward in my stance, but I'm gonna get a lot of weight forward. I'm gonna get that shaft forward, reduce that bounce, and I'm going to hinge the wrists. So not a lot of wrist hinge and very shallow with the soft lie, but with the firm lie, a lot of wrist hinge, hitting down into it, just gonna to try to hit that rubber just behind the golf ball so that we can get the loft that we want and as much spin as we can achieve. I don't think I can get it to stop next to that flag, but if I can just get it to stop on the green, then I'll be happy. All right, let's have a go. Lots of wrist hinge, still soft, still committing, still trusting the club to do the work for us. I'm gonna open the face a little bit. I want that extra height. Weight forward, lots of wrist hinge. Got plenty of height. And I couldn't stop it next to the flag, but I've got it back on the green and I've enjoyed the challenge. You really do need to ascertain your lie before choosing what type of shot you're gonna play. And those two lies are definitely different and you have to approach them differently. So make sure you're looking at that lie, whether it's a pitch shot, a chip shot or a bunker shot, you've gotta have a look at your lie first before deciding how you're gonna play the shot. But when it comes down to it, there really are the two most important aspects are trust the club to do the work for you and commit to the shot. I know that's not always easy, but they're our two main goals for these types of shots around the greens. Now, talking about commitment, if you're leaving a lot of these approach shots short, then pop up into the corner here. We've got a video just for you. Until next time, are you the best golfer you can be?